that require no vote is um, actually just to take public comments. If there are any, uh, any public comments for an unofficial meeting, or for, you can wait for next month and then have a, a quorum. Yeah. But I won't be here. But you're welcome to make comments. Oh, okay, could I just... Yeah, you're welcome. Come okay. on, sit at the table, well, too. Well, last time, remember I made this mysterious remark. Um, no, it was, it was uh, the real estate guy. Was. Matt McDonough. What? Matt McDonough. No. Do you mean the one that's on the board? Uh, Craig, 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 Craig. Craig. Oh. I uh, said, what's the plan? Yeah. Remember the right. Smith has? Because you were talking about. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. So I thought, because it's no secret, yeah, no. that I would bring the plan tonight for any of you that want to look at it. Okay, great. And it's kind of hard to see. Are these the same? Or? It's kind of hard to see what is going on here. Because this particular plan was passed to me by somebody driving a green Subaru who, who dropped it on my uh, doorstep. No kidding. Okay. Um, but it, essentially, Smith acknowledges this is their long-range plan for the area. You can see that there are three buildings there. And where you see... This and this, that's 121. I think this is one. These are the two houses right here. Okay. So it's shown as open space in this plan. Okay. I'm, I'm confused by this plan. It's not a. No, this is. So it's not actually a plan. Am I not turning it? Go in here. Yeah. This, this and this. Data sheet. This information. But I don't understand where. I see that says Belmont. So, essentially, this is a concept. Yeah, well, that's I guess the parking you're lot behind the theater. <coughs> so, and here, yeah. okay. so, so, this is Ford. Just one second, Mike. This is Ford. Get acquainted with it. Okay, sorry. Okay. Good. Um, so, it shows that our buildings labeled 27 on this map, 21 and 27 will be gone. It shows 27 in red, but it should be in gray because it was um, um, The buildings you see, 75, is a cluster of buildings on Alwaga, and they don't want those. They, those are going to survive. Well, we don't, I mean, we don't know where this is from. This is just a, this isn't any sort of plan. It's just a map, but we don't know where it's from. I think Craig was looking for a whole, a whole plan. This one's a real Smith College plan. Yeah, this is not a plan. You're correct. This is a data sheet that gives you information yeah. on property ownership. Yeah. Um, As of 2004. And this is sort of a, a sketch of primarily showing the engineering school. Yeah. Uh, that's an extra one here. Yeah. So. Um, so essentially, in the long run, I think they plan to take all the buildings uh, all the way up. You see in this plan, Green Street is gone, the red one, this one, Green Street is not there. Is Queen Street um, a municipal street? Yeah. 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 But I think I think they own all the property along it. So it being a public street becomes moot. Well, in other words. What? But well, I'm just questioning where who's 
concept is this? Where did this one come from? Like I said, I think that was that Craig's point is. that there's no, there's no actual plan. All we have is the amount. Yeah, all this was was something I showed Ruth mm -hmm. Constantine. Okay, I showed, showed her this one. that one, and I said. This represents your long-range plan, doesn't it? And she said yes. Yeah, well, I would question that because this is just information. It's not a plan. Are you referring to this one? Or? Yeah, that one. Said this one. Yeah. yeah. So this, that, this is as is. Yeah. This is current. Yeah. This, my this one just shows yep. the site of the, the new Ford Hall here. But it would this does and show then, the potential. Potential, two other potential. That's not Green Street. Street there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking yeah, about it. It is. This is, this is where Green Street comes from. Yeah, yeah. 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 That could work. Well, I'll turn around. So anyway, that's all I was going to say. Yeah, I'm going to turn this on. Now, this doesn't look like it would be that worth it. Sort of a Spanish style. Spanish style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, maybe uh, Trish can update you. Next so there week. might there might be interesting. He's movie. kind of in the. He's doing this. Yeah. Negotiating. Good. Any other public comments or? Okay. Um, Update on the local historic district uh, possible expansion. Do you know? Yeah, we can chat about that a little bit. Um, it's basically we're talking about expanding what would be the Elm Street Historic Overlay District to include the Round Hill area. Uh, there is a public information meeting later tonight oh, uh, to discuss. Well, it is, it is primarily for neighbors. Yeah, I was going to say, if you could speak to that, because I don't have any more information other than what we did at the uh, uh, Elm Street a month or so ago. Okay, this evening there is going to be a neighborhood meeting with the developer. And um, we are going to listen to his plans. Well, that sounds encouraging. That's the way to... Um, to work things through, because all I know is what I read in the Gazette, and um, you know, 
if that's the developer's proposal, it seems to be um, you know, addressing a lot of the concerns of the neighborhood in that there's no new construction being right. proposed. Right. I but there are details that need to be worked There are certainly details. Right. And um, I think the real issue, which we finally realized when we met with Paul Spector last week, mm -hmm. is density. If density. Which have, you know, real implications for um, Round Hill Road, which mm -hmm. is very narrow, and um, water issues. Um, Round Hill is a glacial drumlin, and it is filled with springs that bubble up. So we are hoping for the best. My my understanding of the the impulse to form the. Uh, historic, to expand the historic neighborhood was not that it was an uh, anti-growth or change, but it was to preserve historical building. Right. So I, right. <clears throat> am I right in thinking that you would be, um, that the community is still in favor of, or largely in favor of, uh, of forming uh, more, or expanding the historic district, even if the developer um, proceeds with, with their, um, their their express plan that to, to not add on anything. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. Good. Okay. good. And I think also, if I understand correctly, in Northampton only has one historic district, so uh, there's only one historic district commission, right. and this would be adding on to that, right. to the obligations and purview of that commission. Right. Northampton has a historic district commission that technically is set up to administer all of the historic districts within town. But, but there is only one historic district that mm -hmm. has been established so far. So therefore, the focus is, is strictly mm -hmm. on Elm Street. If, for example, Palmer Terrace or the downtown or something else would come on board as a district then this group would have multiple district responsibilities. I believe, because I was uh, serving in, in, in another city's um, historic district, that the city could also, or separately, form different historic commissions Absolutely. and have a district commission for each historic district. Um, and uh, uh, But that's, that's something that would be taken up. In this case, because they're contiguous, I can certainly see the rationale. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are all kinds of ways to play that game. You can have one big district that handles everything. You can have uh, one big district commission that has subcommittees. You can have individual committees. You can have the big commission that has a representative from each district. It just depends on how the city would choose to administer that. At the time. And do the, do the people on the hill feel that the that this is an appropriate um, setup to, to simply become part of the of the Elm Street district. We, I think it's the most efficient thing to do. Yeah. Uh, we were told that staffing would be a problem if we were to become our own district. Yes. Also, if the process would have been <clears throat> longer, we would have had to um, develop all sorts of bylaws uh, yeah. on our own. And, Good point. Um, all yeah. yeah. Okay, and you're meeting tonight, and it's uh, just informative to yes. uh, to learn about the plans. Yes. But yes. Everyone has been alerted to be on their good behavior. And, and yes. Well, will the rest of us, right, well, for those of us who don't attend, uh, will the rest of us uh, learn about the plan? Or is it will it press or? Press will be in attendance. Great. Yes. I look forward to hearing that. Also, representatives of. Um, the Historic District yeah. Commission. Yes, we'll be there. I will not, but um, Marissa uh, and Martha. Who's the chairman Good. and Martha. So you'll have two um, um, members there. Mm -hmm. So there will be some communication that way. Can I ask you a question? Of um, I would, we have read the um, preliminary study report, which we wrote, but then was it was edited. And a question is, what is a 
historic preservation restriction. And is that the same as a deed restriction? Yes, it would be the same. And another term for it would be a historic preservation easement. And in effect, if you understand that if you own a piece of property, um, you have a what they call a bundle of rights to that property. You can use it, you know, subject to local ordinances or what have you. Um, but if you give away some of those rights, uh, such as you, you give away the right to ever change the building, or give away the right to tear it down and put up something else, then you have given part of that package that you own to another entity. And that's what those would okay. be. These would be restrictions that could be agreed to between a property owner and some other entity, right. presumably the city, the city, that would own that part of the property, really. And that would be held in perpetuity. Thank you, that was my next question. So that question. if the property owners change, mm -hmm. then the next property owner uh, will know that they're only buying you know, 90 percent of what they see out there, or 80 or whatever. Uh, but it would be like an easement in perpetuity. For example, if you had an alley going across the back of your yard or something like that. Um, now, how that will be structured, I have no idea. You know, the city attorney will be setting that up uh, if they choose to go that route. Uh, but usually that is something that is voluntarily given by a property owner, but it can be written to be in perpetuity. In other situations, the entity receiving that easement or restriction uh, can pay for it. And that's often done with a, an alley or a you know, power line easement or something like that. But they would buy it. Is that what they could. I mean, and again, I don't know what Massachusetts law is that well. I'm used to Midwest and Virginia law uh, because that's where it came from. I don't know Massachusetts law. Uh, but it's probably pretty much the same. I mean, we're talking about ancient land use law. Thank you, that's very helpful. Okay. We're saying a question, but I, I, I should know the answer because I've been on these commissions, but um, if a property owner holds, if owns property that is uh, mortgaged to a bank, and many people have mortgages, um, Properties are appraised on the basis of best and highest value, right. best and highest use, which can sometimes mean that the, that the appraiser would see that the value of the property based on its potential use in, uh, for, for denser right. development. Um, if you voluntarily enter into a, a historic district, you're, you're reducing the capability of the bank to um, uh, to realize that that higher use, so-called higher use, um, is that is, what's the legal aspect of that? Uh, again, I, I can't recite the law. I'm not a mm -hmm. lawyer, but um, the, the way it usually works is that if you give, give away part of your property rights, uh, that in effect reduces the value of that property. And the bank might say, okay, we can only give you a mortgage for, you know, a million dollars instead of two million dollars because you've given away the right to tear the thing down. They might say that. In other instances, though, they could say, oh, well, this is being preserved and so as a up. potential historic district. Wow, that adds to the value of everything. Yeah. So the value could go up. In most instances, in other places, that has not been an issue unless there is a purchase price agreed to to acquire that. I, I use the term easement, but mm -hmm. you know, that, that's just the state of the art. Um, Barbara, do you you're, have been in town for a while, um, probably longer than any, but uh, um, do you, when Elm Street was being formed, do you recall that being a matter of discussion? Well, I'm sure it was. I don't recall specifically, but I think it always is that people think, well, how is this going to affect my 
the value of my property, and I'm sure that same argument came up. And I and I and I respect that that individual weighing of of uh, up and down. That 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 pretty foreseeable. Um, I was. But I think I think the mortgage issue is a, is a slightly separate one because right. uh, theoretically you you know you can't alienate part of your property that you hold under mortgage. You can't if you have 20 acres you can't open a tire use tire dump on the back 10 acres because you would significantly ruin the value of the property. And the bank would say, you know, we own that. You can't do that. Um, now this is sort of the other way around. This is to me increasing the value of the property. But I just want to. I want to make sure that that we're not encouraging people to pursue something that, that potentially some banks might have a hard time with, or maybe this is an individual thing where they need to people need to examine their own mortgages. I think yeah. there's two separate issues too. I, there's a separate issue with a historic district than there would be with a preservation yes. restriction. A, a bank wouldn't want um, like if you had a mortgage on your house and you said. I really want to protect this forever. I want to put a permanent restriction on it. Yeah. Your bank might would likely have a problem with that. But but then entering into a historic district is a is this only issue? It would be the, the same thing. Like if you're wouldn't yeah. My, I, I, I hear you. I, I, I see that distinction. Yeah, Mike, that's, Mike's that's very true. But but and, and, and I agree. True. Uh, but at the same time, once you're in an historic district, there's a substantial reason to believe that you are fairly heavily restricted. I mean, in other words, you can't change house color, you can't change siding, you can't, in most cases, change window mullions and mums without without approval of, of the uh, historic district. So it's, it's, you certainly couldn't tear the house down, um, even uh, in, in a historic district. Uh, and even if you didn't have any preservation restrictions on the house, you couldn't tear the house down. But within the historic district, you are also protected by reason of the fact that your neighbor can't do ugly things to their house. Very good, yeah. Therefore, the the quality of the neighborhood is it's great. Yeah. Uh, so that, that so that's what so you with the historic area. district, yeah, okay. it's a balancing act. That, with this the is historic helpful. preservation easement, yeah. it focuses on the individual property, and that one has to be tested right. individually. In fact, they often would say that you know, if you give away part of the value of your property to a municipality or whatever it would be, what is the value of what you have given away? That's a charitable contribution come tax time. That can be figured in also. And there are many, many, many cities around the country uh, or groups that have such programs where the charitable contribution is a major factor in a property owner's decision. That's fascinating. How is that determined? Uh, well, they, they simply appraise it without the easement and with the easement, uh -huh. and whatever the difference is, which particularly for farmland or something, uh -huh. could be a substantial uh, dollar amount. Uh -huh. uh, but th there's a lot of case law on that, and any good uh, land use attorney can advise you on that. Thank you, Ms. Depp. That's important. And then as far as historic districts go, there's a lot of data that shows that either property values stay the same or increase yeah. rather than decreasing. So, uh, uh, you know, obviously I'm in favor of them. I mean, I'm yeah. wholeheartedly in favor of them. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the, the, the new, this new add-on section wouldn't have any uh, problem with bank uh, mortgage holders if they pursue this. And it sounds like they wouldn't. Yeah, I, I hope we will go the historic district route as opposed Good. to restrictions. Um, Smith owns an historic property down towards the south end of Round Hill Road, the Gables, which is a Pratt house. And um, we hope it will be there 100 years from now. Very good. Well, I look forward to this. What time is the meeting? 7.30. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Or no, comments? no, that was very helpful. I wish you, you very, very good luck. Thank uh, you. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll check out the Gazette tomorrow. And see what yes, yes. Um, is there...
Now, the 2011 recap and planning goals for 2012, did you? Um, a specific agenda in mind? Not really. Um, okay. Basically, just look back at what we've done this year and think about what we hope to do. Okay, very this good. Year. Let's hold that off for January then. Sure. Yeah. Um, is there any, are there any commission projects to update without the full committee uh, here? Not really. Um, I did apply for the initial submission to Mass Historical Beret Railroad and Canal Resources mm -hmm. study. And they're, they're supposed to let people know this week where they were invited to apply right. for the full grant. Sorry. Bruce Barber, do you have any comments? We're going to wrap this up, the this informal meeting, wrap it up in a minute. But I guess there are uh, CPA funds for historic preservation. Not the little, lovely little bridge, but the um, well, uh, Academy of Music was one. Putting uh, 275000 into the Academy of Music uh, that will pay for a rather large amount of stuff, actually. It will pay for um, repairing, uh, restoring, rather, the, the roof over the state. Uh, which had been re restored uh, uh, periodically by municipal employees, but it's very high, very dangerous, yeah. and, and, and they reach their, at the end of their ability to patch. Um, so that's going to be done. And then uh, more, more visibly, um, restoring plaster work uh, high up in the, the ceiling of the main, the main uh, 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 seating area. And then prior to um, prior to putting up the uh, uh, all of the scaffolding, uh, they'll take the seats out, and uh, and then when they put them back in, they put new seats in. Uh, apparently, the um, new seats are not as expensive as one would expect. Maybe you turn maybe you turn yours in. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, more comfortable. But more comfortable, less. Uh, I mean, some of the uh, quite a number of them are sprung and and. Uh, um, well, I, and I haven't seen the design yet, but I'm sure that they will be um, uh, trying to find a, a you know, a, 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 a historically appropriate design. Well, a couple of theater projects that I've worked on, there are uh, companies around the country, at least two or three, where they will come in, take all of your theater seats out, take them to their factory, refurbish them, uh -huh. reupholster, redo, redo the iron. Well, maybe that's what I don't know. And then when they're finished, Reinstall. There, there you go. That may be. Uh, one that might be one yeah, way to. Go. Yeah, yeah, because that that's commonly done with um, theaters where they really have historic seating. Other places where it's just chromium yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I think these were not. These are not original. They were I know. Like the early fifties. Yeah, really. Okay. Yeah, really yeah. The other ones are unfortunately. Well, I mean, one thing of historic interest is it, it's not on the immediate agenda. Is their expressed interest in. Uh, Replacing what is now a missing chandelier that used to hang from the or, or, Oculus. What is it, what's the term for the larger? Yeah, yeah Oculus uh, would be an eye opening. Yeah, that, well, currently there is a rather pathetic looking <laughs> modern sad. mechanical <laughs> fan <laughs> that it is uh, grossly out of scale with the shape of the space um, and provides no light at all. Um, so anyway, they, 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 what's what apparently a large? Uh, I've asked. Uh, um, who's our, our member from, from the library? Um, Dellant. Dellant, to keep an eye out, thank you for, um, in, in, the, in the photographic uh, collections, uh, an eye out for uh, some shot that might inadvertently have a picture of the, uh, uh, of the chandelier, and he said he would do that. Um, but at any rate, they have not approached the CPA for it, it's possible they'll look for private donors. Uh, for it, but when I spoke with uh, Andy Crystal, I, I certainly uh, said, you know, it sounds like a, a grand idea, and, and I sort of really bring it that much further toward uh, eventual uh, uh, restoration. I, I was shown, interestingly enough, um, on one tour, a feature that I hadn't been aware of before, which is that there's the, the, the windows on the front of the academy facing the street actually are are covered in the inside of the building because they're a stairway, a grand front of the house stairway that went up to the very top of the uh, of, of the highest part of the, uh, of, of 
the balcony uh, with sort of, uh, there was an area with uh, sort of bleacher seating um, uh, that was uh, identified by, by some people there as having been for um, uh, people who couldn't afford other seating. I mean, the, the academy was built certainly during a time of um, when Northampton was a uh, uh, was, a, was an open, was a uh, city that would not countenance any any slavery or any mm -hmm. thing like that. It was, it was, a, it was a late building, um, but um, uh, so the, the the potential for it being a sort of second class citizen. Uh, seating area was probably not very strong, but uh, contrary to what, what they were they were reporting it uh, to be, but it was um, uh, nonetheless it's, it's fascinating uh, the way the building was originally structured. You can still see that the stairways um, similar to what you see in some Broadway smaller Broadway houses. Yeah, yeah. So it was really stacked. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, and at any rate. Um, can I ask a question? Please. Is it just, I don't know whether it's appropriate for us to do this as a commission, but I, if it were, I was wondering if we could, and we probably can't do it because we would have to vote, but if we could vote to donate something from our funds to, if there is a DAR restoration fund, um, if that's appropriate for us to we need give to a grant to that. It's a great understanding. Let's see what the insurance situation is. With their insurance and also the liability on the driver, um, and um, because that, wasn't, once that was too bad. It was really a shame. Yeah. Sorry. That was really too bad. Yeah. Well, so apparently, they're getting a lot of offers of donations. Right. Right. So they may not. Right. Yeah. Like okay. But it seems. I mean, because for instance, you know, if if their insurance or whatever didn't cover everything, um, <clears throat> presumably they might be able to do a CPA application also, but. That doesn't reimburse, and obviously they can't wait yeah. to go through that process to fix whatever they need. But you're right. I, I don't know what the CPR structure is. I mean, nationwide is obviously a very highly um, right. endowed uh, organization. Right. And, um, but if um, if it turns out by the when all the dust, the financial dust settles, mm -hmm. that they still are in need, I certainly would be happy to yeah. look into that. Yeah. Um, we, we, you know, I, I can report to from from the CPA that certainly our funds are dwindling as as um, uh, we attach income to long-term bonds, um, notably the uh, Bean Allard um, playing field uh, vote, which um, was uh, wonderful, is a wonderful project, but which will uh, certainly take uh, um, uh, a recurring bite out of, out of the CPA budget. Um, so the, um, the, the the large projects like uh, First Churches and uh, Lily, no, 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 the Forbes and uh, uh, well, any of these, what? The Academy. Yeah, the Academy, the large projects like that are, are probably, uh, for the moment, uh, at least for the foreseeable in the next uh, few years, are not going to be, not going to be possible. Um, that doesn't rule out, however, ongoing smaller projects and one of the things that the uh, CPC is uh, has indicated will do is to is to help guide applicants to say you know perhaps uh, you need you be more successful in your applications if you scale the project down um, uh, because it's uh, otherwise it will leave the CPC in a management position which it doesn't want to be in of, of, of scaling projects down for the applicant and uh, uh, we'd much rather receive projects of uh, scale that were, that were the applicant scales it, um, so they know what they're doing. Um, yeah, they can phase their projects. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so rather than rather than applying for a you know two hundred fifty thousand dollar grant as somebody might have done you know five years ago, uh, you know how about a how about a forty thousand dollar grant and. and uh, um, where you're happy to get it instead of a, being unhappy that you've only been awarded 40 out of 250, um, that sort of thing. Um, okay, well, this is this is a non-meeting. This, uh, this is a and for the sake for the sake of our of our recording, I simply say this was not an official meeting of the of the, uh, 
historical commission because we don't have enough, uh, we don't have a quorum. Um, but um, I think, is there anything else? Is there any um, correspondence that will be upcoming when we convene in January? Uh, there's a section 106 review that I just got uh, Friday, and they need a response within 45 days, so we'll have enough time. But okay. it, it looks sort of like a non issue. It's for signal upgrades along Route 9. So they're putting in new traffic lines. So unless there's okay. some really historic traffic lines. We will take that up and. Um, What's the date in January? Is that our usual end of the calendar? Yes. Yeah, that's the last Monday. I noticed in, in uh, one of the media blogs about the city that there was mention of uh, outbuildings on Prospect Street being taken down by the city, the city's order, due to uh, a, a hoarding. Um, general uh, poor condition of a building, uh, of, of, a, of a house facing Child Park on, on Broadback Street. Um, with, did, did Lewis issue, I mean, that built, that kind of location and building would automatically, typically have come under our purview. Yeah. But apparently it was taken down early this month. For emergencies, we they don't review. need a review, but typically if it's they would fall under our ordinance, nobody lets us know anyway, so it may not have been built before. Oh. But I didn't get to that. Oh, okay. Do you know about it? Yeah, I heard. I just heard about it. I don't, I don't know the details. So. It was in um, Northampton Media. I want to take a look. Yeah. Um, yeah, he usually just shoots me an email like, hey, I'm going to issue this emergency. And, and we understand. We've, we've always gone along with that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but since he didn't let us know, I'm thinking probably it wasn't built Okay. But, but I'll check it. All right. Yeah, that could have been like a later, later shed or something like that. that yeah. Were added later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that was the one. I think they said it was only held up by the things inside it. No, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, not to impugn anyone, but that, that's the impression I got from that. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to. I felt like the wood was what was holding it up. So. I don't want to go further, but. <laughs> In a meeting, but anyway, it's on the tongue, right? That meeting. Um, okay, well, like I said, wish, uh, wish everyone well for the for Hanukkah and Christmas and all the days. Uh, um, whether you're going home to sugar plums, uh, 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 jelly donuts, or, or latkes, I, <laughs> I, I, I wish you well. Uh,